The watersheds of coastal Marin County have supported coho salmon and steelhead trout for thousands of years. In the last 50 years, throughout the California coast, we have witnessed a dramatic decline in fish populations. This decline coincides with impacts to the watersheds in which these fish survive. In 1996, the National Marine Fishery Service listed coho salmon as threatened. The Park Service started a project to find out how many fish they had and how they were doing within the, the watersheds within the parks. As things went on, we learned more and more about the fish and sort of all the habitat that they used. And a lot of the work that we've come up with has shown that these populations in uh, coastal Marin County are sort of the southernmost stable populations of coho in their range. Coho salmon have always been thought of as being weak because there are fewer of them around and they're harder to find. But really what we found in, in watching them is that they're the more aggressive, the more dominant fish when you have steelhead and coho together. The coho salmon have a uh, pretty stringent three-year life cycle. Um, starting from the adult phase, um, November, December, January is, is the period of time where the adults come up into the freshwater streams to spawn. Um, for the adults, they've spent about six to 18 months out in the ocean, and they've got about three weeks to enter the freshwater, find a place to spawn, and um, do that before they pass away. But if they spawn successfully, the eggs will stay in the gravel for about six weeks before they hatch. And then another six weeks, the alevin or egg sac fry will stay in the gravels before emerging to the water column. And so it's normally February, late February, early March that we start seeing the um, young of year juveniles come out of the gravel and they populate the pools and they'll spend a full year in the fresh water. So March, April through the next March, April before they head out to the ocean. Steelhead trout, they can live anywhere from one to three years in fresh water, sometimes four or five, before going out to the ocean. They don't need to go to the ocean. The other thing about steelhead trout is if they're ocean run, they can come back and spawn and go back out to the ocean. So there are some of the fish that actually can spawn multiple years. They're able to adjust to, to changes in the uh, weather conditions. If you have a really bad year, you might lose a lot of the fish in that watershed, but that's okay because Maybe some of them will come back and reproduce next year as well. Whereas coho salmon, they're pretty much, they have one chance to reproduce and that's it. The red is a, uh, the egg nest, R-E-D-D. -D. Really consists of multiple pockets of eggs. The female will lay their eggs and the, the male will um, kind of broadcast um, his milt over the eggs. And then the female will go ahead and bury those eggs. And as she buries those eggs, she digs a new pit where she can lay more eggs. So a red is anywhere sometimes two to four meters long, two to four meters wide. So it's a big area where the fish will work the gravel. And basically within that zone, there are multiple pockets of eggs. The typical location for a red would be sort of in this pool tail out section where you have a transition from um, kind of flat water into a riffle zone. And the ideal or the advantage to that is that the water is accelerating, and not just on the surface, but it's accelerating through the gravel. So it's a very good way of delivering oxygen to the eggs um, while they're in the gravel. When we started this work, we were really focused in on, on uh, coho salmon and steelhead, but we found everywhere we looked, we'd find steelhead. and and coho were few and far between. So we really keyed in on their, their uh, conditions. John West Fork is the largest tributary of Alima Creek. And in 1997, we started looking at that watershed and saying, gosh, this has lots of potential. There was a culvert along Highway 1 that was really difficult for fish to get through in terms of adult migration. 
So we're on the John West Fork of Olima Creek, and this is a riparian exclusion zone that we constructed in 1997 in cooperation with the, the local rancher. Um, prior to the fence being constructed, the creek bed itself looked much like the, the area over here to the left where we have um, regular livestock access. In cooperation with the rancher, we were able to, to protect the riparian zone um, but what we need to do is provide uh, access to other pastures that the uh, cattle use. The cattle have access to the grazing lands. We have a riparian zone that we've been working on since 97, including a great deal of willow planting and some small scale um, stream bank stabilization structures. One of the interesting things is why are we protecting a dry creek bed? And when you're out here in the winter time, and there's a great deal of flow coming down this stream channel and you see fish swimming up it and spawning, you'll, you'll know why. Here at Point Reyes National Seashore, we monitor and study coho salmon and steelhead trout as indicators of watershed health. The survival of these fish is the survival of California watersheds.